So what is the appeal of pro wrestling? That is the million dollar question. For a lot of people, it could be fantasy violence. It could be the idea of watching a sport. It's scripture drama. You know, it is cheesy. You know, if you like your soap operas, extra cheesy. Watch pro wrestling, you'll get that as well. For me, it's weird because at first it was the fan- it was the violence. I mean, I started watching at the tail end of the Attitude Era, 2000, 2001. And the invasion angle just blew my mind at the time. So the idea of uh, two separate companies, even if th- that concept was still a slightly foreign to me at the time, was like so, my again, mind-blowing. I don't want to use that word. Watching those two companies, WCW and you know ECW, and then WWF just warring together, that just suckered me in so much. Obviously, it's 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 not as cracked up as it, it once was now, but the appeal was still there. Now it's it's everything. It's a sport. It's entertainment. It's comedy. It's drama. It's action. For me, the appeal is I could tune into a rest, a two hour wrestling show and. Have a chuckle, have a have a laugh, have have a, have a good match. You know, for me, the appeal is I get to sit down. It's the speculation. It's the speculation of, you know, of of the sports. You know, the, the behind the scenes, the, the, the signings, and everything else, and then the uh, front of the scene. All these wonderful, gifted athletes, and I just want to watch them progress. And, and succeed, and, and some not so much so, but the idea is still there. The appeal is simply, it's it's a good show, has you interested, a great show will sucker you in, a good show with a cliffhanger will get you going, oh, I, well, I have to watch this next week. It gets addicting after a while, and after almost 15 years, it, it it's the appeal is... It's everything. It's it's violence. It's comedy. It's drama. It's high drama. It's action. It's the pageantry. It, there's nothing else like wrestling. Even if it's scripted, even if, if MMA has uh, the pageantry of wrestling, it's still inside that cage. The judges could do, the referee could really botch a call or uh, somewhat injury could happen. And injury still happens in wrestling. It's it, the idea is you know coming into that match, uh, coming into a wrestling show, you will f- see definitive beginnings, middles, and ends. You'll see rivalries. It's like everything else, but it's a continuous thing. <laughs> the appeal is just it's it hooks you in. Th- that's the appeal. It, it, you know when it's good, it gets you, it grips you, and then you, you want to keep watching. So what is the appeal? Uh, the appeal is everything. If, if you want some action, you got it. You want some comedy, you got it. You want some high drama, of course. You want the backstage stuff, that's there. You want uh, you want scantily clad women. <laughs> well, maybe not as scantily clad now, but they are they are very attractive. <laughs> we got we got that as well. And some of those women can wrestle leagues around the men in some cases. Uh, you want, you want outrageous characters? Wrestling's got that. The appeal is that it's this variety show. Oh, and there's violence involved. In 2004, an RPG with the official WWE license was released called Know Your Role, back when watching Raw or SmackDown wasn't as painful as it is now. Like many of its time, the game was using the D20 system to catch onto that OGL bubble. While it was neglected by its publisher, it was far better than it had any right to be, gaining a small cult following among some play-by-email groups and forums. I should know, I was part of one of them. Personally, I never had a problem with them using D20 for wrestling, but I'm a firm believer in system does matter. And to that end, the system needs to be built around what it's trying to emulate. Traditions like character classes, saving throws, at all, are fundamentally a poor fit for presenting wrestling, and shouldn't be kept around for tradition's sake. Enter Wild World Wrestling a spiritual successor to the aforementioned Know Your Role, but opts to blow the D20 system up and rebuild it with wrestling in mind instead of trying to rework D20's quirks. Does it manage to grab the brass ring, or is it just a mid-card act? Let's find out. 
At 134 pages, Wild World Wrestling is a pretty casual read. It doesn't take itself too seriously and presents itself with the assumption that you already know a thing or two about wrestling. This is to its advantage as the book's not interested in excessive detail that might bog things down. It cares about getting to the primary end of things. Artwork is a mixed bag, having some simple pieces mixed with photos of indie wrestlers, some mugging harder than others. Overall, about what I'd expect from this kind of game. Unfortunately, no index, so that's a notch against it. Wild World Wrestling's character creation and playstyle carries the assumption that players will be creating multiple characters. However, we'll only be making one character, in this case a high-flying mid-carder named Yanker. The first step is attributes, which works similar and differently to its predecessor. Wild World only has five, athletics, brawn, flair, instinct, and power. Each can be thought as a representative of a wrestling archetype, and favors moves in that archetype. For example, a technical wrestler would have a high amount of instinct, and a more hardcore one would use brawn. Either way, attributes can be rolled randomly with a roll of 1d6 minus 1d4, which you may scrap if your attribute total is less than 5. Rolling these attributes, we get the following. Athletics 3, brawn 0, flair 2, instinct 1, and power negative 2. This makes his fatigue threshold to be 20. Wild World doesn't use hit points, but instead an escalating penalty of minus 1 to rolls when you take enough fatigue to go over the threshold. Second is level. In an interesting turn, level amounts to your level of experience and spot on the card. First level is akin to working dark matches, while 11 and higher is for the main eventers. For the purposes of this, Jaeger is 6th level. That grants him 14 gimmick enhancements and 24 skill points. We'll get into these later. Third is attitude, whether or not you're a heel, a face, or a tweener. Typically you pick one attitude and can't change it again until you level up. Fourth is weight division, which plays a modifying factor to the character's attributes. Given the motif we're going with, Jaeger is a cruiserweight, which grants him a plus one bonus to athleticism and a minus one to power. Since this puts his weight at around 205 pounds, this means his weight mod is zero. A weight mod can affect whether it's easier to hit certain maneuvers that requires lifting and adds to fatigue on knockdown. Additionally, weight mod can cause certain moves to inflict fatigue on their user. Fifth is skills. While there's only eight skills to pick from, several of them have subtypes. As mentioned before, Jaeger has 24 skill points to distribute. We'll put five each in three knowledge skills, athletic maneuvers, flare maneuvers, and technical maneuvers, three in athletics, two in performance, two in language, Spanish, and two in language, German. Finally, gimmick enhancements. These are the equivalents of feats in other games, and two are gained every level. Since he's sixth level, Jaeger starts with 14. We're going to go with feat of dexterity, maneuver familiarity athletics, master aerialist, Mastery Athletic Maneuvers, Reckless Abandon, Refocusing Your Speed, Ring Sense, Finisher, Signature Move, Popular Appeal, Twice, Move Set, and Close Call. Character creation, while not as crunchy as its predecessor is, does have a degree of crunch involved. The tricky part is likely going to be the spread of gimmick enhancements. I could see that potentially overwhelming newcomers, even with the associated subtypes. While the sample characters at the end book are a nice touch, I think some example archetype spreads for gimmick enhancements couldn't hurt. Regardless, it's clear that the attributes are the star of the show, and encourages playing a type instead of trying to be a generalist. It's a nice way to make multiple characters manageable. Given the game it's succeeding, Wild World uses the core role of the D20 system. An interesting change is that getting a confirmed critical can have long-term effects, since it counts the damage as both fatigue and injury in that case, i.e. throwing up the X. Additionally, the rolls for maneuvers, we'll get to those, are treated as the action count, which can determine which gets resolved first. There is no set initiative roll. Instead, the present skill is rolled using the attribute of the wrestler's choice. Pins are treated as a three-stage contested roll. The pinning character makes a power roll versus any one attribute by their opponent. The catch is you can only use that attribute once. Natural 20s and natural 1s can result in a pin reversal, depending on who rolls it. Submissions are handled similarly with the caveat that said submission maneuver has to be a threshold of 10 plus the target's brawn. Heat is treated as a game's extra effort mechanic, and as a representation of the crowd's reaction to you. A wrestler can have up to 4 heat, which resets at the end of a major card. An easy way to gain heat, cheap heat if you will, is that when an attack inflicts at least 10 damage. Now you can steal heat in a contested roll by beating their roll by 10 as well. While you spend 1 heat for finisher maneuvers, Merely having it can increase your critical threat range, allowing you to attack multiple opponents as well without penalty, and boost your attribute and skill rolls. 
Maneuvers are the bread and butter of the matches in Wild World Wrestling, obviously. Maneuvers are a contested role to determine action count, with the higher one getting results first. This role can have a set of modifiers based on damage die size, die number, bonuses, drawbacks, and requirements. This is in addition to modifiers based on attributes and skills. It results in a bit of a min-max situation, but fortunately is rooted in description rather than details. While most will have signatures and finishers, the system is designed to be fairly freeform with moves. Let's use Jaeger as an example, and suppose one of his signature moves is called Hunting Season, a shooting star press in this case. The first step is determining what type it is, and thus what attribute it uses. Since it's a classic high-risk maneuver, it'd fall under athleticism. Second is determining damage, which will go with 2d6 in this case, following the addition of weight modifier. Lastly, any additional parts that would be appropriate, in which will go with exertion 2, requires prone target, and stunning self if missed. This results in a modifier of 0. The strength of this system is the emphasis on the final result rather than the individual minutia. That said, I would recommend handing out the modifier table as a handout to make it easier for players to make up moves on the fly. I've personally done a similar approach by making a set of cheat sheet cards for a maneuver deck at times. Sometimes the appeal of a certain game is in its potential for use rather than any preset affairs. In other words, being more of a source code than a game. Wild World Wrestling isn't quite that far, but it very much is tailor-made for those who like to customize builds. It's not excessively crunchy, as I stated before, but being in a relatively untapped area for role-playing, I could see its spread of choices being a little overwhelming. Even with that, I can confidently give this game a stamp of strongly recommended. Using the D20 framework gives this game a bit of an edge, given the monolith status of D&D, and its level of crunch is a happy medium between the narrativist and simulationist extremes. However, if your preference is for rules-led experiences, this one might be a harder sell. Know Your Role was my introduction to the notion of wrestling in RPGs, but it would not be the end of the journey. Next time, we'll be going over one of the more comprehensive wrestling RPGs when we enter the Squared Circle.